We are now going to discuss bond pricing and how bond pricing impacts the yields on those bonds. We've talked about this before, but in this module we're going to make it very explicit. We're going to find out how to take a bond price and then go to the yield. And this is how the secondary markets work. Bond, bonds, we know the terms. Individuals bid on the price. From that we can determine the yield then those yields are often reported in popular outlooks such as the Bloomberg uh, news site. The material that we are going to cover in this module is uh, complemented by the Invest Investopia article, Advanced Bond Pricing, that's uh, listed at the top of this module. Pages 5 through 19 uh, talk about bond pricing. In that discussion, I would suggest that you ignore the formulas I don't discuss in this module. They make some or derive some formulas that aren't wrong but are not what we're going to be using in this class. So if it isn't in this module or presented in the class, um, those formulas will not be on, on the test. Um, a note here, and again we've said this. Um, a number of times, many bonds, treasuries in particular, but municipals as well, and corporate bonds as well, are traded on the secondary markets. And again, a secondary market, we're not creating a new instrument, we're just trading an existing bond between the current owner of it and uh, finding another owner of that, or seller and purchaser, and they come to the price of that bond in the secondary market. The prices of those bonds, as they change, indicate changes in yields. And higher prices mean lower yields, and lower prices mean higher yields. And again, we've talked about this inverse relationship, but uh, if you think about it, you pay more for a bond, the remaining um, payments from those bonds are worth less, and hence a lower yield. Again, as the market conditions change, prices will change and then that will lead to yield changes on, on, on those bonds. Uh, I am now going to give an example of bond uh, reporting of the bond markets. We're going to do this with our Bloomberg uh, Bloomberg website, so just go to www.bloomberg.com where I'm going to go here is market data and if you just click on market data it'll, it'll com come up and um, we're now at our market data and I'm just going to go into rates and bonds so we'll click there and reasonably soon we'll get uh, get get this that information, information up here when it first comes up what you will see is 10-year government bonds United States Canada Mexico and Brazil and what they report for each one of those is a yield so the US yield is 2.69 Canada is 2.59, Mexico is 4.03, and Brazil is 4.31. And then you see those are the American yields. European yields, and you can see there, there, there is a difference in yields across these countries. 1.87 for Europe, all the way up to 8.82 for Greece. And there is, are reasons for that. And if you re recall, um, Greece has had been having some issues of, of late or in particular in the past years uh, debt problems and that is now reflected in much higher yields and then also Asian bonds as well all of those are what will be what what our sovereign debt we can get more in, on corporate bonds over here but I just want to go into the US Treasuries right now because that's where we're going to begin a lot of our discussions on 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 bonds and bond pricing and you will see the US government bonds here and here we have three month six month 12 month two year five year ten year and 30 year see the price listed there and coupon and we've discussed the coupon rate before um, coupon and again we'll we'll discuss discuss that again in this 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 module but a coupon is the interest rate on the payments 
you can here see here the three month six month and 12 month are zero coupon which means they make no coupon payments two year is 0.25 five years 1.37 uh, 10 year is 2.5 you can see the prices listed here last and from those they uh, calculate the uh, the yield which is now reported up here on this yield curve here they give yield curves for uh, for for current one month ago and one year ago and you'll see here that on the left hand side of the axis we have three month six month 12 month, 2 year, 8, 5 year, 10 year, and then 30 year. So those are maturities of bonds. 3 month are, we'll make a payment in 3 months, 6 months we'll make a payment in 6 months, and so on. And you see the, the, the yield curve here. But in this case, these prices that are bid result in these um, yield curves. There, again, there is a market for bonds, and in that bond market, par participants know the terms and the payments on the bonds. They know the coupon payments and the par value, or the value at the end of the payment, and they bid against each other to determine the price of the bond, which is P in this case. So, the market determines P, we know C and M's, and then using a yield to maturity formula, we can calculate the yields. Here is the formula for determining the yield to maturity, and here in this formula, P is the price of the bond, C1, C2, and C3 are the coupon payments, M is the par value, which, occur, which is made to the, or paid to the, uh, owner of the bond at the end of the period. In this example, the bond has three period payments, so we're getting a payment in period 1, C1, 2, C2, 3, C3, plus M at the end of the three periods. In the market, the price of the bond is determined, so that is known, and that is determined within the market. So bidders bid against each other and they determine the price of that bond. Also known will be the payments from that bond, the C1, C2, C3, and M. Those will be known. So, and in fact they're known when, obviously, when the person bids on the bond. So price C1, C2, C3, and M are known and what our job is, is to find the yield to maturity, or in this equation, y. The yield to maturity, or y in this case, is the discount factor, or the interest rate, or the yield, that's the same across all periods, that causes the cash flows, the discounted cash flows, to equal the price. So for each price, there will be a different yield to maturity, and as price goes up, the yield to maturity will go down and vice versa. So there is the formula for calculating the yield to maturity. So if you know the price and you know the C1, C2, C3, and M, you can find the yield to maturity. Now, if you're looking at that formula and you go, if you know price, C1, C2, C3, and M, then you can determine the Y in a spreadsheet, or for that matter, anywhere, Y is the internal rate of return. If we take the price, put a negative sign on it, and stick it over to on the right-hand side of the equation, that is the internal rate of return. So, what we can do in Excel to find the yield to, yield to maturity is use the internal rate, rate, rate of return function, IRR, and put the range in it. Here is an example of the internal rate of return function. Here we have a bond. This actually is the example we used in the last module, a two-year treasury note 
with I know Treasury notes make semi-annual payments so we have four semi-annual periods over spread over two years and the payments are in period zero minus a thousand and we're just saying that that's the price of the bond and payments of twenty dollars in each one two three periods fourth period we get the twenty dollar coupon payment plus a thousand dollars we can then use the internal rate of return which in the above example is in cell D9 and that function will be equals IRR parenthesis D3 through D7 other parenthesis D3 is the minus a thousand dollar payments or excuse me purchase price of the bond so we have to put the purchase price as a negative then each one of the payments is 20 20 20 in the final 1020 D7 and then we find the internal rate of return. In this example, the internal rate of return is 2%. And again, that's in cell D9. We're back in our uh, Excel spreadsheet now. This is our yield price examples. And again, you can download that from our website, our Compass website. And I am going to work both on an internal rate of return side and also on a price side just to show you the um, relationship between the two. All right, first, here's our bond, which again, we have, this is a two-year treasury note. Coupon rate is 4%, and it's a $1,000 par. It will make $20 payments in at the end of period 1, 2, 3, and 4, plus the return of the $1,000 par. I am going to say that our price right now is 20, 10, minus 1020. Based on that, I can find our yield to maturity. And our yield to maturity will equal our, our internal rate of return. All right, and I'm going to just, this is a semi-annual, and here, let's annualize it. And to annualize it, I'm just going to take this one and multiply it by 2. All right, now, I want you to note something. Our annual yield to maturity, and let me just put annual yield to maturity, is 3%. That is below our coupon rate. And what's happened here is that we paid more for this bond, $20 more than the par value, and hence our annual yield to maturity is below our coupon rate. Let's put a $1,000 price in here. And already you should know that with a $1,000 price, we will get a yield to maturity of 4%, exactly the same as our coupon rate. And if we sell this down at a discount, 980, we'll get 5.1. So this simply illustrates the negative relationship. And let's just put this down here just to illustrate this price. 980, we had a 5.1 yield, 1,000, 4.0, and let's do a minus 1020, 3.0. Again, illustrating the negative relationship between yields and prices. I want to do the opposite of what we did in the previous slide and start with a yield to maturity and then calculate a price. So I'm going to do a yield to maturity here. I'm going to put it here. And 
and I'm going to do this on an annual basis. I'm going to do a 4% yield to maturity, which is the same as our coupon rate. So we know the answer to this already. The price should be a thousand. So I'm going to state our yield to maturity in semi-annual terms by dividing by two. And then down here, I'm going to calculate a discount factor for each of the periods and a discounted cash flow. So the discounted cash flow will equal 1 divided by 1 plus this raised to the period. And here, I'm always going to want F6 to remain the same. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of there. And I'm going to copy this down. So there we see we've calculated the discount factor for each one of the periods. Now the discounted cash flow will be the cash flow times the discount factor. And you note, I do not include the payment in here because we want to calculate the payment. Copy those down and then sum them up. Yep, lo and behold, $1,000 for a 4% return. Exactly what we thought we would get. If I put a 3% yield to maturity in here, I'll get a 1020 price. Close. A little off by rounding, but if we put that like that, and then 0 0.051, well, let me do something here. I'm going to put a 0 0.035. 0 0.035 equals a $10 price. Let me put this in here. Oops equals this, this one minus this. Now note, 3, 5, 3, 5. If I change this to 0 .04, $1,000 payment, $1,000 payment goes in here for, as you can see, they're all linked together. All right, what I want to do now is demonstrate how to calculate yield to maturity with zero coupon treasury bills. And remember, treasury bills, less than a year, one payment, and they're discount bonds, so they don't have any coupon rate. They just have the maturity M at the end. Here you see this formula, price equals M1 plus Y to the N. For the six months case, where yield is stated in the six month period, you can say n equals one and then rearrange the formula as you see in the bottom there. So calculating yield to maturities for zero coupon treasury notes, or excuse me, zero coupon treasury bills are very easy. Let's illustrate how easy they are by just putting a price right here and I'm going to put a minus 980. Remember, we're going to have to su subtract that minus 980 to get it positive again, but here's the yield to maturity calculation. And I'm just going to implement what we saw on the previous slide. That will equal this divided by 1 minus that, minus 1. So, very simple. For any price, we can calculate the yield to maturity. And obviously, we could work it the other way, too. We could, uh, we could uh, state a yield, a yield to maturity and then find the price. To provide a summary of this module, 
we can find the relationship between brain prices and yields. We can also calculate yield to maturity using the internal rate of return function in Excel. There are other ways to do that. There are formulas that you can implement as well as indicated in the reading. Again, I'm not going to hold you responsible to know those formulas, but you should know how to do it with using the internal rate of return function. You should also know that it is essentially a yield to maturity is an internal rate of return in a, in, in a manner of speaking.